We're going to take some notes here, folks, over matter and change. Matter and change. And we're going to talk about, you know, one of our objectives is to be able to tell the difference between the physical change and the chemical change. So that's one of our main objectives with this is to determine the difference between physical changes and chemical changes. First of all, we're going to start with, and I don't know, we talked about branches of chemistry, didn't we? But have we ever said, ah, what is chemistry? I don't think so. So let's start off by getting a definition of what is chemistry. Chemistry is the study of the composition, structure, and properties of matter and the changes that the matter undergoes. Some questions that we might ask. What is that material made of? What is the internal arrangement? How does it behave? Slash change when it's heated, when it's cooled, when it's mixed with other materials. Why would it act like that? So those are some questions that a chemist might ask. Okay, I see a lot of you scrambling to write these questions down. That would be classified as a part that's probably not as important to have in your notes. Okay, probably not as important to have in your notes. Physical properties and physical changes. A physical property is a characteristic that can be observed or measured without changing the identity of a substance. So the big thing with this physical property is that last part, without changing the identity of a substance. Melting point, boiling point. If I have a cube of ice and I set it out on this table, it's going to melt, right? So it's going to change into a liquid. But is it still water? Yeah. Yeah, it's still water. So melting and boiling point are physical properties. A change in a substance that does not involve a change in identity is called a physical change. The substance changes, the identity does not. As I talk about these physical changes, all right, I want you to look right here. Look up here. I have a piece of paper, right? I have a piece of paper. I have now changed the identity, haven't I? Wait, no, I didn't. That's still paper, isn't it? So I didn't change the identity. Okay. Did I change the paper, though? I, I tore it. So, it has changed the piece of paper, but it's still paper, right? What about this? Have I changed it? Yeah, 
yeah, I've changed the way it looks, but is it still paper? Yeah, it's still paper. Those are physical changes. I change the stuff, the, the stubs, the, I change the substance, but I have not changed the identity. It is still paper. Grinding, cutting, okay? Grinding, cutting. If I cut down a tree, have I changed it? Absolutely. Is it still a tree? Yeah. I just split the wood up. Changes of state are physical changes. Changes of state are physical changes. Well, what are some changes of state? Okay. A solid. A solid will have a definite volume and a definite shape. There's my solid. So my solid has a definite volume, a definite shape. Here's a liquid. A liquid has a definite volume, but it has an indefinite shape. The liquid will take the shape of whatever container it's in. The liquid takes the shape of whatever container it's in, so it has a definite volume, but it has an indefinite shape. That leads us to the next one, a gas. Matter in a gaseous state has neither a definite volume nor does it have a definite shape. Neither a definite volume nor a definite shape. So physical changes, ladies and gentlemen. Physical changes are changing of the states from solid to liquid to gas. Those are all physical changes. We can change the substance, but we don't change the identity of that substance. Chemical properties and chemical changes. Chemical properties and chemical changes. A chemical property relates to the substance's ability to undergo changes that transform that into a different substance. The ability of a substance to transform into a different substance. The ability of charcoal, which is just carbon, the ability of charcoal to burn in the air is a chemical property. Why did we say in the air? Because in order to burn, that's a combustion reaction. In order for something to burn or combust, we need oxygen. So, the ability of charcoal to burn is a chemical property. Think of it like this. I burn that charcoal, right? Can I get the charcoal back? Can I get that charcoal back? No. If I burn a wood, if I have a little campfire, if I burn the wood, can I get the wood back? No. Chemical changes. We have changed the identity of that particular substance. Here we go. There's our little charcoal burning in the fire. All right. The charcoal burning in the fire is a chemical change.
A change in which one or more substances are converted into different substances are called a chemical change. We also refer to that as a chemical reaction. So a chemical change is a chemical reaction. The substances that react in a chemical change are called reactants. The substances that are formed when we have a ch chemical change are called the products. So, you're going to be dealing later on in this course with chemical reactions. So, it's important to know the definition right here and to see that reactants yield that's what the arrow is. We read that as yield products. Reactants yield products. So if I find my yield, my arrow, the left side of the arrow is the reactants. The right side of the arrow is the products. Reactants yield products. I just said that reactants yield products, right? I'm going to give you the most basic reaction, one of the more basic reactions that I'm sure you probably have heard about at one time. Okay? Here is a chemical reaction where, to keep in form, the reactants here are in blue. The product is in red. So, 2H2 plus O2 yields 2H2O. So, you will learn later on that this means that two molecules of hydrogen will react with one molecule of oxygen to yield two molecules of water. That's how you will read this later on. 